Welcome to today's episode of the Blueprint Podcast, where we throw out the old blueprint so we can learn to become who we were always meant to be. I'm your host, Jason Smith. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button and share the podcast with your friends on social media and tag me in it at jbirdfit. Today, I have a very special guest for you, Joey Labossiere, clinical hypnotherapist and coach, spiritual guide and activator and creator of self-worth mastery and spiritual awakening. Joey, welcome to the podcast. He's somebody that I came across when I was going through a hard time. And I think certain people come into our lives at the right time. Joey's definitely one of those people that when I was going through my hardest time resonated with me because I was starting to dive into shadow work and trying to figure some of this stuff out. And I feel like he's one of those people that just makes you better. He changes you. He hones you. And he brings things to light that you wouldn't normally think about. So Joey, welcome to the podcast. Can you share with people a little bit about what you do and what a hypnotherapist, what that work actually looks like? You got me all emotional already, man. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Geez. It's just so, it's just such a full circle moment to hear these things. And, you know, I too struggled so much through in the past, but yeah, let's, let's dive into the hypnotherapy. Like basically what I, I do as a hypnotherapist is I, we go deeper within the subconscious and the unconscious minds. You know, we, we go under the, the layer of, of our protection and our, our consciousness, our conscious mind to, to kind of dig up and, and, and change the story around what we've been telling ourselves. You know, a lot of us are, are living in fight or flight or, you know, are just living in, in a state of fear, a state of heightened awareness and, and hypervigilance. And um, my job is to go deeper and find out why we have these, 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 I guess, triggers, these cycles, these patterns um, for those who want to change and, and be more of themselves. Like I, I like to say that I like to bring people home to the truth. And it's bringing it home is, is to our hearts and, our, and allowing our souls to be really expressed versus our egos and versus our patterns of pain and suffering and, and trauma. So that's a little short version of of what hypno hypnotherapy is, I guess. <laughs> no, and, and I love that you said that you bring people home. Yeah. Because it only takes a minute of looking through your comment section on any one of your videos to realize the impact that you're having on the people that follow you on a daily basis. We, we talked a little bit about this when we first jumped on. I said, I, I'm not really used to hearing that kind of stuff yet. And like, it's hard to respond to. It's like, thank you. Right. You know, and yeah. but it, but at the same time, it, it makes total sense, you know, because of that desire to want to serve and that desire to want to show up for the world has been there since I can remember. I just never understood how it was going to happen. You know, I almost went to be a chiropractor after leaving, you know, the correctional service when I was yeah. like 33 years old thinking, oh, maybe I'll be a chiropractor. Maybe I'll go do seven or eight years of school. But that never ended up, you know, transpiring. But um, I've always known I'm, you're probably the same. You want to you want you to wanna, you wanna help people. You always wanted to help people. I always love being a hype man. You know, I always love people like being like, Hey, you got this, like chin the fuck up. Let's go. You know, like we got this and I've always been that guy. And now I, I get to kind of be like be that guy professionally now. And it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, yeah, dude. <laughs> no. It, and it's so cool because, and I want everybody to really listen to this. It, you're a different person at different stages of your life. And in each, oh, yeah. in each stage of your life, if you're willing to take the lessons and learn, yeah, you, you can capture, you can learn so much more about yourself, who you are, where you're going, what you're doing and how you can serve in the world. And yeah. so in, in the very beginning, I was a chef and, you know, then you move on and you go to school and you expand and you grow and you do all these new things and you're searching for meaning and, you know, you have all these different career paths and, you know, some people will call that being a menti, multi potentialite, sure. <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden you fall into, well, now I'm helping people in a new way and it's actually, it feels a lot better than the things that I've done in the past to be able to help people in this oh, way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As you, yeah, you, you just evolve. And that's the thing is being that student and knowing that what you're going through, where you're at is a piece of the puzzle. You might not see it yet. And you, you know, you might know that there's more, you might not be super aligned with where you, what you're doing or where you are in your life. You know, it, it could be your relationships. That could be, you know, your career, whatever it is that you're doing it could be school, but you got to trust that, okay, this is going to be a piece of, somewhere down the line. This is going to make sense. And every, <laughs> thing, every single thing I've done, even the stupid shit makes sense. <laughs> You know? Well, it, and it does because it prepares you yeah. for working with other people who have mm -hmm. that same shared oh, yeah. or similar experience. And you can come 
come at it from the angle of, well, I've seen this before. I know yeah. what this looks like. I know what it feels like. And I may not know what it feels like exactly for you, yep. but I've seen it in so many different spaces throughout time mm. that I can definitely have empathy for the situation that you're in. And I want to help you go through that. I want to guide you through that and get you to the other side, or at least help you develop the tools and the skills to be able to do that for yourself. Right. Yeah. What's the the quote from Abraham Hicks? Words, words don't teach. It's experience. You know, words are great in a book. They might give you some insight. They might point you in the right direction. But in the end, when you've been through something, when you've worked through something, when you've moved through this darkness and, and you've come out the other side and you've developed these skills and you've started meditating and you, something clicked you want to scream it uh, on the top of the rooftops right like you, that's one of those things like when we go through the awakening how many of us get, oh, read this you need to read this book you need to do this you need right. to do this right you want to because you're lit up by this wow like i found i'm finding pieces of myself that i didn't even know existed i'm finding ease where i didn't even know that could could be there's there's this love this excitement this joy in my life all of a sudden that i haven't felt for a decade you want to share that. And it's like, wow, this brings you just brings you closer to helping more people. It's just awesome. But it's so hard when you want to share that. And the people that are in your sphere oh. of influence that are directly in your life that you see every day and you want to share that. You with love them. them the most. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> they they don't know how to receive it. And, and you don't know how to give it. You don't know how to share no. it. You, you just know that I have this book. Mm -hmm. And it's so good. And it's mm -hmm. given me so much. And mm -hmm. I, I want to give this to you as well. Well, then they receive that as what am I defective? Am I, is there, yeah, is there something wrong with me? Saying? Am I broken? You know, and, and they get defensive about it. Yeah. And all you're trying to do is be like, no, I, I feel all these new feelings right. that I, I've never felt before that I didn't know existed. I didn't yeah. know I could feel. And it's because of this thing that just opened yeah. up something mm -hmm. inside of me. And, and here you go. <laughs> it's, it's like you could have, I always, I like to use this analogy. You could have like a little notebook, maybe there's only four or five pages on it, but it's got the keys to the most abundant, magical, loving life. Like it's the keys to the universe in four pages. If you give it to the person who isn't ready to read it, it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if everything is absolutely bang on accurate. If that person isn't ready to receive it, it doesn't, it's in one ear, out the other, it's gone. It doesn't make, it's like every book. How many times have you read one book or had this book on the shelf and it's been staring at you for two years, three years, four years, five years, I don't know. All of a sudden it's time to read it and it just clicks. Boom. And you're like, oh, it needed to be now. There's that divine timing that we can't understand. The universe the or source, God, whatever you want to put label on it. There's a, there's a timing to this stuff, man. You know, we don't always get it. And, and like you said, when it's the, you know, when we find that peace for us that lights us up or brings us closer to our truth and we want to just share it, it's usually with the people around us the, the most, but it is the most frustrating. It's like, why don't you want to feel like I feel? Why don't yeah. you want to feel better? But different lessons, different times. Yeah. It's why can't you see what I see? And right. I, I see this a lot with, uh, cause I do a lot of attachment style content. Mm. So you have the anxious attacher mm -hmm. that's trying to get the avoidant to see yeah. if you could, if you could just change this one thing, if you mm. could experience this one thing, our relationship would be amazing. It'd be perfect. Now it's a lot more nuanced than all of that. Cause you know, the anxious attacher is certainly going through their own experience and energy that they have to transmute as well. Um, but when you try to give the avoidant the book attached, and I tell people, please don't do this because they're, they're not going to receive it. They're not going to be able to accept it. And even if they were to read it, they would pick it apart and tell you all the reasons why X, Y, and Z right. isn't, isn't going to work for them because they're just resistant in that moment to any type of change. And so that's why I always tell people, please focus more on yourself in understanding how attachment styles work for you within you and how you relate to other people. And then everything will start to change in your relationships when you understand yourself. And it's yes. just that, that disconnect right there. People can't tap into that all no, the time. So no, they, they struggle right. with that. And, and so why do you think that would be as to why they can't tap into that for themselves? Well, I, I, man, that's such a loaded question. I don't even know how to answer that one. There's so many different things that could be happening, but I, I just feel like when you ask for what well, they can't tap into into to them with themselves, like the information that I'm trying to give, I'm trying to show them. Is that mm -hmm. what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, they're not ready. I, I, I honestly feel like some people need, they're, they're more, 
lessons to learn along the path for them. Like for me, I fuck, I was suffering was one of those things where it just needed to happen over and over and over again. And uh, I don't like to say that I am like that anymore. I like to think I'm a little easier on myself, a little more aware, but I've had to learn some lessons, 340, 341, 342, and then 343. I'm like, okay, enough's enough. Yeah. And and so that's what I call the pain threshold. Yeah. Um, Because when you're younger, you, you learn to tolerate a certain amount of pain and that's, that's what you've been conditioned for. That was your right. experience throughout childhood and adolescence mm-hmm. and then young adulthood. And so for some of us, we get into jobs where it's really just high intensity, chaotic, and that feeds your soul because you're used to having this similar type of internal experience. And you're just mm-hmm. like, okay, this works for me. I, I work really good in chaos, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Until, you figure out shadow work and Mm -hmm. you start diving into these things. And now all of a sudden you're moving away from your sympathetic nervous system and you're moving into your parasympathetic and you're starting to relax a little bit. And now this stuff doesn't resonate with you anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's a hard transition. Dude. I, I used to identify myself as someone who needed to have their ass in the fire thrown in and just sink or swim. And then I'll always find a way. And it was true. Yeah. And you did on the adrenaline of just being in it and i thought oh this is kind of cool it works so even with my launches like some of my like even the last little few years here i've still found myself procrastinating (laughs) to get me to that point so people think oh i'm just a procrastinator no you love the adrenaline you love the fucking cortisol spike for some reason you think you find yourself like you've been so used to, to, to being in that fight or flight and that being a, a state of where you execute, like, but that could be a law enforcement thing with, between us too. Right. Like yeah. where it's like <gasps> that adrenaline hits you, you respond. And so that could be another thing with me, but my whole life has been this, like there's been very little structure in my life. It's always been kind of flying by the seat of my pants, but when you're in it, you're in it. I execute. But then right. what happens crash. So there's not this constant flow. It's in, Super big highs and then huge crashes. Super big. Oh, going up again. Going again. This is exciting. This is exciting. Boom. Right on. I'm in it. I'm doing it. And so that's been something I'm learning about myself more and more is my nervous system. Like, like, I don't want to do this anymore. You know? Yeah. I mean, especially when you finally reach that place of you're out of fight or flight, fight or flight. Um, you just feel so different and yeah. you, you see the world differently. You see yeah. people differently, you know, things are no longer a threat. And I, I think that's really the biggest change for myself is the, you know, I'm not the fear that you carry with you, right. That, that insecurity, it yeah. just, it, it doesn't, it's there, it's present. Right. But it's not like, the primary passenger. It's not no. dry. It's not driving everything. It's like, right. yeah, there's a little bit of uncertainty here. And, and uh-huh. I, and I get that and I see it, but you know what? I'm still going to do this anyway, because mm-hmm. I have the tools. I have the skills. Yeah. I, I've, I've built up my repertoire. I know mm-hmm. what I'm doing. I, I have a, a mission and a vision. I know where this is going and I'm going to continue to execute yep. until, until I get to that point. I'm going to stay consistent. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, these are things that you, I had to learn later in life. Right. Because I just didn't necessarily have those skill sets Same. Um, as a young adult. So I had to learn these. And so you find people on the Internet that inspire you. you yeah. People like Ed Milet, Joe Dispenza, yeah, and you just kind of go down that rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. So what was it for you? How did you get into uh, clinical hypnotherapy? <clears throat> so the first book that that found me, I was in Honduras with some friends. We were uh, I was doing a little I think I was doing a six week trip, backpacking trip. This is before my kids. It was 2013, I think, maybe, no, it was 2011, in and around 11 or 13. And a friend of mine who I was traveling with, she had the the book called um, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, she's like, you you really got to read this. I'm like, ah, yeah, whatever. Fuck, you know, sure. Why not? One day I just picked it up. It was was like one of those rainy days, not doing anything. I'm in the, the little dorm thing and I read one page, two page, three page, five. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I'm just like, what is, it's like something ignited within me that I didn't even know I needed, but it just resonated. And, and it was just the, it was just the concept of presence. 
Yeah. Presence, being present. I'm like, what does that even mean? Like most yeah. people, a lot of people don't know because nope. we are consistently, constantly battling the future or the past. And we are taken out of life itself. Life itself is the now, always and only now. Now it seems so simple for me to look at that. But at the time I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. One of the exercises in the book was simple. It's like whenever you have a trigger or an emotion surface, anxiety, anger, sadness, whatever the emotion starts to come up, be there with it fully. And I'm like, well, no, I don't, I don't want to be here with it. I want to run away from this shit. This is not good. This is not fun. Yeah, I'm going to store it and ignore right. it. Right, right. Or drink. I'm just going to, there's a lot more beers in the fridge. I could probably just do that. Yeah. And so it made me, and, and, and Eckhart described it so beautifully. He said, just be with it fully, but release the story in the label. I'm like, release the story in the label? What does that even mean? I'm like, okay. So I had this anxiety or this, I can't remember what the emotion was come up during the day on the bed. And I was like, I'm going to try this. And I just stayed with the emotion without labeling it, without calling it bad or good or pushing, wanting to push it away and just being with it, almost like a, a butterfly landing on my hand, just being there with that experience. Same with the emotion that was arising and it was fucking gone. It went, Whoo. then I just gave it full attention. I breathed with it and it was gone. And I was like, What? This should be here for another hour and a half before this yeah. goes anywhere. What what I, just happened? I don't have to repeat this for the next 20 years every day. <laughs> I was just like, I was blown away. Like it was a moment of like, I will never remember, forget that book, that moment where I was and everything because it was just so profound. And then from there, I started, started this journey into meditation. And with meditation, a lot of times what people don't realize is you're going to start to go a little deeper within yourself and start quieting the busy conscious mind. And when that happens, you there's some stuff that gets to bubble up. And that's what started to happen for me. And with the job I was in, I had responded to a few big incidences. Uh, my 2016 came around and I started to get really depressed. And first time ever dealing with anxiety, like real anxiety. Yeah. Two weeks straight, I remember pacing up and down my my hallway after an, after an incident at work stuck on my couch. My son had just been born. He's like a year and a half. He's trying to get my attention. I'm looking through him. I'm looking through my two, my year and a half, two year old. I'm looking through his eyes on the other side. That's how like gone I was. And I just remember like, fuck, this is it. Like I'm, I'm breaking down. I'm crying. I'm just, I'm just a, a shell of who I used to be. But really what was happening is I was, I was shedding the illusion and the bullshit. I was shedding the old, the, these, these, these roles that I've been playing for so long that did not align with my real authentic self. But the thing is, in the moment, you feel like you're, oh, lo you're losing yourself. I wanted to die. You feel crazy. And, I wanted to die. And you don't, there's no path. No. Right? It, you create the path. Yeah. And so you start looking for answers. And so what are some of the answers you started looking for? Yeah. So one of the moments that just... I mean, there's a, there's a couple moments I call them my moments with God and I'm like, dude, I, I wouldn't, I, I, five years ago, you wouldn't catch me use the word God ever again. Like I was, a, I was raised Catholic. I had a weird effing experience with the church. I was atheist for a long time, or at least non don't talk. I don't talk about Jesus, God or anything like that. And now things have changed because my spirituality has come kind of full circle, but I had these moments, two big moments that happened when I was in the depths of this, the grip of this like darkness um, 2016, about six months after that, that with my son, my daughter was born and I took her out on, uh, it was a January day or February day in Canada. That's cold, but it was like a plus two day, beautiful day to go for a walk outside. No wind sun was shut bluebird skies. And I'm on this gravel road by our property. And I put my phone in my pocket. I put some like Zen music on like some, some, I just, I just needed to go be outside. And I'm walking my daughter with the stroller. This music's playing. And my whole world just goes and, and stops. And I literally felt like I took time and I just went off. And I had this moment of, and this moment lasted about 12 minutes, 13 minutes, where I was walking. Everything was super slow motion. And I could see every detail of the branches of the trees beside me. I could see every blade of grass simultaneously in the wind. I could see every speck of snow falling off the trees with the sun refracting off of it. I was literally one with every single thing around me. 
every living creature, every stone, everything for about 12 minutes. And I was like, what the fuck did I take? Like I've yeah. been on psychedelics. I've had some crazy journeys and this was like that, but as sober as a judge and I'm there having this moment, but it was a moment of true surrender. I finally got out of my head and I was able to fully surrender to the beauty of the present moment without even knowing that that's what was happening. And I was just in awe and I was like, I'm not going to do anything to stop this. I'm just going to be here. And I, and I know for a fact, hard to ever, you know, prove anything, but my daughter activated that in me. My daughter's soul knew what I needed. And, and somehow the two of us connected on that day that I'll, like awesome. it's, it's almost like she saved me that morning because I didn't know what that felt like anymore. I, did, I don't think I've ever experienced it in my human life. It was perfection. It was all the things were gone. Nothing mattered except for where I was with her. And, you know, and that happened for like 12 or 13 minutes. And that I'll never forget that moment. And then I had another moment where, again, I was kind of just in my head and I broke down on my deck in the sun. And I went on my knees and I said, I'm fucking done. Like, I'm done fighting this. Like, just give me something. And I just, it was surrender. These two moments were just surrendering moments to the moment, to the fact that I'm here. It's okay. And within a week or two, I think I had a, a car accident, which was like a near death experience that happened after a day of ice fishing. Coming back, driving the vehicle, hit some black ice. I wake up in the back seat. We're just, just gear everywhere because we have all this stuff. My brother and I are in the back seat. We're spinning on the highway doing 60 miles an hour. Jeez. I'm like, fuck. And in the moment, as we spin and again, slow motion again, everything slowed right down. I'm like, this is it. I'm like, there's no way. I got two kids at home. There's no fucking way. And I remember that thought. Like, there's no way. And I'm holding the seat. And I see my brother's eyes lock on me. And I'm like, fuck. And we go into the ditch. And it's like, angels took the truck and just went, here you go. <sighs> We're just going to guide you in here. Snowmobiles on the trailer get thrown off, tossed off. Like they're off the trailer. They roll. They pretty much totaled. And none of us have a scratch. And I'm like, that's, that's amazing. I'm like, this is my moment. This is my moment. I'm like, I'm fucking done. All the bullshit, all the crap. I'm done. Lost my cell phone in the, in the, in the accident. Woke up the next morning. And I was like, okay, something's different. Like I'm done. I'm done with the bullshit. And, and I was like, okay. Cell phone's gone. I'm like, I'm not getting my cell phone back. I'm going to do, I'm going to go a few months without it. I went on Amazon. I got a slide phone with a T yes. not, with a fucking text. And I went six months, I think, without a smartphone. And it just text and call. That's it. No data. You couldn't even access it if you tried. I'd happily go back to that. Dude, it was, and what did I do? Well, I can't go on my phone. I can't just cruise shit. What am I going to do? I read. I started reading books. I started reading books about consciousness and, and just confidence and climbing out of the darkness. And you are a badass by Jen Sincero. If you've yeah, never read that book, a good one. such a good book, dude. Yeah. That was my first kind of book of like, it was one of my first as well. Such a good read, easy read too, for anybody on their journey, no matter where they are, if they're new to the spirituality or the awakening, or yeah. even if they're deeper into it, it'll just give you an extra boost. It's a really good book. And then I read some other ones like a uh, uh, ton of different books, but, and, and that's what started it. And then randomly, I guess randomly, right? As random as, yeah. as things are. My wife calls me after a shift. She's like, you got to see this. There's this guy, there's this hypnotherapist on this, on this Zoom live. You should really, I think you'd really need to see. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, I don't even know what hypnotherapy is, but that's fine. Get there after a 16 hour double shift. I go on the computer, press play. This guy talking about it his subconscious he's talking about his trauma he's talking about all this shit from his past and i'm like oh this is resonating like i never heard it spoken this way before and his mom had committed suicide when he was like 10 years old and he had the guilt that he felt and that he wasn't a good son and all this other stuff it just wrecked me and after this hour presentation you know my wife looks at me and she goes like you should probably go work with him i'm like no it's bigger than this she's like what do you mean i'm like i'm gonna go train to do this She's like, what? I'm like, I have no fucking clue what I'm saying, but I know. <laughs> but I know I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. Yeah. And she's like, what? I'm like, just give me some time. Next day, I contacted him. I found him on Instagram or Facebook. Let, asked him, said how much I loved what he said. How, where did he go to school? Gave me the place. I, within 
two days I had signed up for the full-time course to go train. And within two weeks, I think, or a month, I think I was flying across the country to go train there. Oh, wow. That was the biggest moment of intuitive guidance I'd ever received in my life at the time. That's huge. It didn't make sense to me. I didn't know anything about the subconscious. I didn't know anything about hypnosis. I didn't know anything about trauma, nothing. But I knew it was like screaming at me, go do this now. Don't fucking hesitate now. I'm like, okay, call work. I'm like, I'm taking all my leave that I have stored. I have a ton of stuff. I'm taking all my leave. I'm taking holiday time. I'm taking this. I, boom. This whole six weeks, I'm gone. And I just went to, I went and I just did it. And little did I know going into this, like I'm, I'm going to train thinking I'm just going to do this as a side gig, thinking like, hey, I can help some people. This seems really cool. Well, the amount of healing I do in hypnosis while we train was massive because we got to work on each other. We need, we need, we need people in the chair. Yeah. Right. We need to do. So all of us get, got this amazing opportunity to not just train and understand the craft, but do our own healing. And man, my world changed that that week, there's a week where we did like a ton of really deep work. And I was like, holy shit, I had no idea how much of these things in the past that were still running my life below the surface, right? The subconscious runs everything. And I was just like, holy shit. And, and I left there a completely different person. And I was like, okay, I'm onto something here and how I show up. And yeah, that's, that's, that's how amazing. I got to that. I love it. So what are some key signs that somebody's actually going through a spiritual awakening? What is, Man, what, is what is a spiritual awakening? To, to me, a spiritual awakening is literally just your illusions that you've been like, it's like, it's, it's all the illusions falling apart from what you've thought was real. Like it's like the, it's like the movie, the matrix, you start to take that right, the right pill and you start to get the truth. And usually the truth ends up, you just end up realizing that often we become something for someone else. We play a role to be accepted. We want to be loved, so we play this role. We abandon ourselves for the sake of another's opinion. Good little people pleasers. Oh, do we become the best? And my yeah. whole life. Good little dude, workers. There was a moment, and I need to share this. This is how powerful walking or, or walking or wake awake waking waking hypnosis can be. When you have a moment of high energy, high tension, high stress. So this is the moment I was 11 years old. I was walking to my new school after we moved the first day of the new school, the school year had already begun. It's October. I'm walking into this new school, never been there before. I'm terrified. I got my brother in my hand, hand in hand, and we're walking to school. We got about a 200 meters left. And I remember saying to myself, I will do fucking anything to be liked and accepted. That moment I created a truth within me. I was in this fight or flight state, this heightened state of awareness. And in that moment, I said, I will do anything to be accepted. Because at 11 years old, you don't give a shit about authenticity. You just want to be liked. You want to be accepted. Right. You're going to this new place. I'm just like, please don't let me be bullied. Please don't let me be uh, this, this outcast. I just want to be loved and accepted. And that probably came from a lot of my childhood too. There's some, some things there. But I created that. And one day in meditation, one day I'm like, hey, why do I feel like I can't be myself fully? And I go in meditation, I go right back to that moment. And it says, because right here, you created this reality. You created this truth. And I was like, fuck. And that from 11 years old to like 30, 3, 34, I did everything in my power to morph into whatever I had to be to, to just be accepted. With women, with my family, with my friends. I'd be this and that group of friends. And I'd be like, no, can't be that guy. Can't be the real Joey there. So I got to tweak this a little bit. Let's be this. Oh, they love me for this. They love me. The, they love me when I get really fucking drunk, like really drunk and be an idiot. Take my shirt off, do stupid shit. All right. This is what I got to be here. Who I'm loved again. You know, that's my, was my whole life. And then the awakening happens when you start to go, holy shit, I've been completely abandoning myself. Yeah. You don't know who you are because you're so many things to so many yes. different people and you're it's very performative and so oh. you fi you find yourself saying well i don't even know what my beliefs are i don't know where i'm no. going what i'm doing why i'm doing it yeah. whose life am i living right now yeah. why am i doing i don't want to do this anymore and you start yeah. to question well what's next is this right. all there is is this really the, the sum of my life for right. the next next 50 years is right. this what i'm doing yeah 
there has to be more. I know I'm yeah. capable of more. I yeah. know I have this in me That's to it. to build something, to yeah. be something uh-huh. more. Uh huh. And, and you that, just have to believe that it's within you to be able 100%. to create that and cultivate that and start building for yourself. But again, it's very easy because we get knocked back down yep. very fast. Yeah, I, I need to stay in line. I need to be all yeah. these other things for other people right. in order to be liked. Well, and you said it, you nailed, you said, it said something very specific that was really powerful there. It's like, we need to trust that, that pull and desire because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be there if it wasn't real. It wouldn't be right. pulling you if it wasn't true. Your soul has come here to experience certain things. There's these things that it wants to be here. And that's where that pull, that like out of nowhere intuitive pull to go try something, do something. It could be jump out of a plane. It could be go play guitar. It could be little things. It doesn't have to be these big monumental, you know, but there's a reason you're pulled to certain things. When you learn to say yes to that inner guidance, that's when the awakening gets really fucking real. I'm not saying it's always comfortable yeah. because you're going to, you're going to fight against old paradigms. You're going to fight against old conditioning that mom and dad formed for you. And, and you're going to get to a point, you might even achieve what you thought you needed to achieve to gain happiness or success. Maybe you right. became a doctor and you might go, I hate being a fucking doctor. That's hard. Or you got your degree in this and you got your degree in that. Or you said, oh, I wanted to write books. I started writing. I hate writing. That's a big. You're, you're really well, hit me with the degrees, man. <laughs> well, you know, but I, I got I got them, and I'm not doing anything with them. <laughs> well, but it's not it's not even that you're not doing anything with them that I'm called. It's not even that thing. It's yeah. like, but we we all like I think a lot of us have we're told, hey, get this job, get that degree, get this thing. This is what you need for a good life. Yeah, this is how. And you a lot of us have achieved these things, or or risk, or you know, made these things happen, and realize. That has nothing to do with any of that. You know, we just, a lot of us have just done things because we were told that's what you need to do or what, where happiness is or where you need to be content. But we abandon ourselves every single time. And, and I think it starts early in life. You know, we, ab- we abandon our own emotions a lot of times for early in life. And so we can, and, and there's a reason for that. And mm-hmm. your, your parents are your caregivers. And this is why yeah. the podcast is called The Blueprint. They Mm. lay out a blueprint for you of Mm. your life, where you're going, what you're doing from the time that you're born to the time that you go to college. And even sometimes your college experience is very much dictated by their expectations, their goals, their vision of your life for you. Or if they don't believe in your capabilities and abilities, right, then you get pushed in different directions and you again, right. again, you end up a young adult. You don't know where you're going, what you're doing, why you're doing it. You don't know who you are because you're very much in that state of, well, this was the blueprint that was provided for me. So I'm just following that. But you're never right. questioning if that's what you actually want. Is that in exactly. your best interest? Is this where I should be going? Is this going to yield the type of life that I want to have? And you don't know what type of life you want to have because you never asked yourself, what is for me? There it is. Yeah. So we, we throw out that blueprint. It's in the beginning of my intro, right? We throw that out because you have to pivot. It doesn't work when you start living in your own authentic self and you own that part, that part of you and you show up unapologetically. Now you're in a state of creation. You're in a state of co-creation and you can start to build the life that you actually want to have. And you, I find people like you, right? We draw people yeah. into our life experience yeah. that yeah. now we're we're helping each other, we're shaping each other, we're honing each other, we make yeah. each other better, we're able to build together, and that just continues yeah. to level up through this process as you become your authentic self. There it is. There it is, brother. That's that's the awakening in a nutshell. You know, it's it's like it's coming it's home to truth. Thing. And it's so fucking life shaking and shattering at times, but it's the most profound, beautiful journey that I've yet to meet anybody who goes, I'm done with this. There's times where you want to just say, you know what, I'm just going to go back to normal life for a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with that. I will never okay. judge anyone for taking a little bit of a break and saying, I've okay, been I just so want close some Netflix. So many times. <laughs> well, it's not, yeah. even just, it's not even just going to watch some TV or something like that, but like going get- back to regular job. 
giving up on this process and everything that I, you know, because for me, this has really been 365 days of pushing really hard on this, right? Whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever this Mm -hmm. is, it's a podcast, it's social media, it's a lot of little different things that, you know, it's a 21 day self-love program. It's all these things that have come come to fruition over a period of time. And each mm-hmm. stage of that is a learning process and, and oh. you're, you're growing, you're developing, you're becoming different. You're figuring things out. You have to learn how to edit. You have to do all these things on social media, right? You're dealing with haters and trolls and people that are telling you, you can't do this. You shouldn't do this. This isn't mm. for you. You're not, you don't have the credibility. You don't have the capability mm-hmm. and right. everybody loves to tell you who you are. And that's where <laughs> we, we go back to that authentic self of, well, no, yeah. I, I know who I am and I'm comfortable with where I'm at right now. And I'm building something for me. This isn't at the end of the day, it's not really for you. I'm doing this because I think what I have to give is important. And I've got the the proof in my DMS in my comment section and all the messages that I get in the emails that this is changing lives. This is impacting people's lives. They're 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 running into self-discovery and they never even knew what that phrase was self-discovery. What does that mean? attachment styles. I don't know what that is. And so they're right. finding, they're starting to find themselves and, and awaken to some of the patterns that are keeping them feeling stuck. Yeah, man. You know, when I first started going on to, on TikTok and sharing some of my messages and stuff, I remember going, man, one day it would be so cool one day to be so-and-so or yeah. this guy or, you know, have, cause you start going, Oh, these, these guys, you know, got to figure it out or they got it all going on and blah, blah, blah. And you start comparing yourself, but started creating some videos and I had a few videos that went viral and like two, 300,000 in my, in the early days of uh, my first TikTok account. We'll talk about that again a little bit, but, but um, I remember having this one video where I've had like nothing but um, like, what was it? 500 positive comments. And then there's that one comment that just, and I'm looking at it. It's like, you narcissistic, blah, blah, blah. You don't even blah, blah. I'm like, maybe I am a narcissist. Yeah. I'm sitting there going, fuck, what if I am just this? And I'm and then I was like, wait a minute. I got 500 people going, thank you so much. I never thought right. about it that way. Or you brought this light to my life or just you've activated something within me by just your words. And I'm stuck honing in on Bob four, seven, four, seven, six, 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 seven, eight, nine, 10, 14 in the basement of who knows where he is. And I'm hyper-focused on that one thing. Yeah. With either no picture or a picture of anonymous. Right. 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 Yeah. And it's just this really crazy, like how, but you know, that was the learning curve for me too, is, is really getting used to like, Hey, I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. How, how could I be? That's just going back to my old ways of, trying to please everyone. Right. Oh, I wish everyone loved me. But that wouldn't be, if I did that, I wouldn't be authentic. But it's also good in those moments to reflect on it for a second, right? And, and I tell people this just in their daily lives because people mm. are always going to tell you who you are to them. Oh, yeah. Right? And so you have to question, right. is this true for me? Is there any value in this statement that they're giving to me right now? Is there something that I can learn from this? That quote by Charles Cooley is one of those ones that just really resonated with me in my own spiritual awakening of recognizing that I'm being somebody for somebody else. And I'm not allowing myself to be who I am. I haven't even discovered really who I am. Where am I going? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? Mm. And so there were just some deeper questions that you have to start asking yourself. And and that's why you, you fall into this work. But I think this segues nicely into what are spirit guides how can we connect with them? And what does communication with your spirit guides actually look like? That's such a deep question. I'm so glad you asked it because, you know, only a few years ago, I would have never even understood what that even meant. Well, and, everybody on here is, you know, love and light and all that stuff. Right. Just like, okay, right. but, but what is that? What is, this what is that? What does it yeah, mean? Yeah. 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 For me. So, so what happened, I'm just going to give you a little rundown of what, why I started to, con- how I started connecting to my guides and realized that there was more energy out there, more, you know, angels and guides out there helping me. I was, I was in a uh, meditation retreat in Guatemala and I started meditating. I started meditating and I started meditating. This was the first time I actually really was sitting with myself and I kept having this owl come into my, 
into my inner vision. And I was like, what is this? Like, I'm not a visual person normally, but this owl kept coming in. This owl kept coming in. This owl kept coming in. I was like, what the heck is going on? But I could feel the presence of this energy every single time I would get to this depth of, 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 of meditation. And I was like, what is this? And I started asking some people, I'm like, why do I feel this presence with me and this love with me? And like, there's this presence of this owl on my shoulder. And I'm like, I don't know. And this one, one of my mentors just said, no, like often your spirit guides will come in, in ways that, you know, in, in to, to show you how you can relate. So a lot of times it'll be animals, spirit animals, like an animal, or it'll be a being. But when I started to go guides, I'm like, this is weird. But what I really started to realize about how important guides are and who they are and what they are is when I started guiding people into hypnosis more and more and doing more of the spiritual work in hypnosis. We, in my opinion, have a team that is dedicated to us on the other side of this physical reality. Some of them can be loved ones that have passed. Some of them can be our pets. Some of them are ascended masters. Even, you know, you can go as far as uh, higher vibrational beings. I don't have all the answers on what they are. I don't think that everyone ever experiences them the same. Everyone has different clairs and different abilities to connect in the metaphysical way, in that metaphysical way. I feel I'm a feeler. Like if I sit in meditation and calm my mind enough and I ask my guides to come in, I can feel a warmth on my shoulders. I can feel hands on my shoulders. And I honestly feel like we are not even close to really tapping into how much support we have on the other side of this physical reality. The biggest thing I would tell people, if you want to tap into your guides, you want to feel them. Because a lot of people see the, the numbers on the, you know, the 11, 11, the 1, 1, 1. All of a sudden, they'll have a feather at their foot. And the next week, they have another feather at their foot. And they're like, what's with this feathers? These are all breadcrumbs. In my opinion, it's either our future self our higher, or our higher self giving us little breadcrumbs or our guides just going, okay, hey, keep going. Keep paying attention. Keep staying conscious. Because it's, I feel like there's- It's Matthew yeah. McConaughey in the Tesseract. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> right? All right, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> How awesome would it be to have that voice in your guy? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go this way. Um, but um, yeah, the guides part is something that's only developed over the last couple of years for me really deeply where I realized that we don't have to rely on our own strength, just our own strength alone. We can ask for guidance and you can call your guides- whatever you want. Like it's going to be unique to you, but I firmly truly believe we have angels and guides on the other side that are willing to help guide us, show us the way if we are open to receiving guidance from them. But it's one of those things where it's like, you got to put intention, you know, it's put intention out there. Like, Hey, I'm struggling right now. Can you give me a sign? Can you show me the way I'd like to feel you right now? If you came in right now, if I'm going to meditate, calm my mind, I think that's such an important part. Do some breath work. Calm your nervous system, get into your body, feel anchored and strong and ask your, ask your guides to come in. You'll be blown away on the experiences you can have when you just have a little faith and you quiet your conscious mind. And it's so, not, it's not asking from it for it from the standpoint of prove it to me. No. Right. Right. It's that no. energy of I'm open to receiving. hundred percent. One of the my favorite affirmations is I release all resistance to receiving guidance from the other side. I release all resistance to receiving metaphysical guidance or guidance from my guides or guidance from my higher self, my soul. Like that's one of the easiest ways to just open up to it is I release all resistance to receiving that that divine guidance because we have access to the quantum field. You know, Joe Dispenza talks about this all the time. And I think J J Joe might just stay a little more on the science stuff, which is fine. I'm yeah. more in the I'm more in the mystical. Like I love the magic of it all, and I think he blends it really well. Um, but I don't even think we've scratched the surface on what we are actually capable of tapping into. Like I see it in in set one on one sessions all the time, full on channeling sessions of information and knowledge that comes through. That this person goes, what the fuck just happened? What the fuck just, just came through me? Like their voice changes. They, they receive ancient knowledge and guidance from their ancestors in this, these deeper states of trance. Like I see it daily. And so that's why I was like, I can't deny this shit anymore, man. Like I just can't. That's awesome. Do, can, I, can I label it? Can I say exactly what it is? No, because it's far beyond, I think, the human comprehension of what we're doing. But we have, we have that guidance on the other side. There's no doubt in my mind. But what we know is that if you can put yourself in a meditative state, yep, 
or close to it, yep. it's not, not going to be perfect. No, nope. right. Meditation is difficult. Your mind's going to wander. You're going to be all yep. over the place. You know, these things happen now from your perspective with yep. doing it in a clinical setting, right? Yep. I can see that it, it being much more tame, but when you're in your home and you've got mm -hmm. some binaural beats on, or you're listening yeah. to a guided meditation, your mind's going to wander. You're going to be all over the place, but it doesn't mean that you can't still tap into your inner knowing. And is that the Absolutely. spirit guides? Is that the, is that the, is that the field? It's whatever right. you want to call it. It doesn't exactly. matter. It's just, you have to learn to be able to tap into it, yes. accept it, listen yes. to it, yes. digest it, assess yes. it. Is it true for me? Can I use this? And the answers just naturally come. All those things that you ask me in the comment section, they will just naturally come to you if you can yep. put yourself in that position to just get off your phone for 20 minutes, yep. pop in some binaural beats and yep. just breathe through, breathe through your nose, right yeah. out, out through your mouth and just allow yourself to relax and, for a little bit. It'll come. Yeah. And the more you, and the, and the more you do that, it's like going to the gym. It's like, you know, you're, you're not going to go to gym and, and, and squat 350 on the first day. You're going to be shitty at it. You might just start with the bar. Your, 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 your techniques going to be awful. You might get some guidance. And all of a sudden, the more you do it, the more you get, it's like anything. Meditation is the same. You get really good at knowing when you're in that space. You're like, oh, I'm there. You kind of drop in. Like, I, I, I feel it. I'm like, oh, there I am. I'm good now. I'm well, in that space where I can kind of explore. Yeah. And it's why I use binaural beats. And I use, this, I use the same one every single time because mm. it, it's almost like in, in the same amount of minutes or seconds that I'm listening to this. Yep you tap into it because now you've conditioned yourself with yes. this particular song that your mind 100%. is saying, okay, it's meditation time. This yep. is, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. And you're telling the yes. mind it's time to do this. Yes. And, and, and then you drop into it and you're just like, it's awesome when it happens because yeah. you're, you're in this place of I'm not sleeping, but I'm not like fully dreaming either. You're in this state of, I know what's going on around me, yep. Yep. but you're, you're, relaxed into it and if you've oh, never yeah. if you've never been able to relax into anything before man is it amazing <laughs> it is it and and it's it's a little weird at first when people go like they almost lose track like where did i go you know yeah. like, you didn't go anywhere actually you were just right here right you're so present that you felt you went somewhere else <laughs> like you know yeah. instead of being in here Th this is so home for so many people and when you find that inner peace, that, that, that nothingness, that space, it's like, oh, what did I just access? And, but yeah, like you said, like anchoring in, like what you do is with the same thing. Every time you're anchoring it in, it's create, it's creating that neural pathway. That's automatic. You know, it's automatic. It's like, boom, you hear it. Boom. I'm there easier and easier every time. It's so awesome. Yeah. It's so good. We've taken a, a deep dive into a lot of different things and mm -hmm. I know that, when we talk, talk about family and different relationships, um, you know, every so often there's a black sheep in the family yep. and they're the person that's able to move beyond thoughts, feelings, and emotions that, that keep them feeling stuck or yep. these think these belief systems that get passed down from generation to generation. Yep. So what does it mean to be the black sheep? What does that look like? And how can we begin to move beyond that? Yeah, I think it's different for for everybody uh, because I, I, a lot of you know my clients and a lot of people that I talk to, they've been the black sheep since the beginning. Personally, I never felt like the black sheep until later, and I think I don't know if it's because conditioning was so deep within us all, but I was the one to suffer and put myself through the ringer enough to have my suffering and my pain be enough to for me to go. I, I'm done with this pattern and I've seen it with my dad. And I used to think the depression was genetic, right? It's like, Oh, my dad had depression. So I'll have depression and this and that. And there was some generational stuff there, some trauma stuff there and some deep rooted stuff there. But I think everyone, I find the empaths, the ones that are very sensitive for the most part, usually end up being those, those black sheep or those dark horses or the ones that they just question things more. They feel deeper. You know, they feel more. They're like, hmm, something doesn't feel right here when this you're telling me this. That that to me is is enough to know that you're you're built, you're you're here to do the work. 
Like that's why that's a big reason why you feel so deeply. That's why I think there's so many sensitive souls on the planet right now, or they're awakening to their sensitivities. Like, okay, it's fucking time. Society needs us. Humanity needs us to clear that density within our, our, our family line. And I think the black sheep, you know, they, they go through probably a lot more than the people who are refusing to see or face the darkness, face those pieces of us. So, you know, I think it can look differently. You could be the black sheep ever since you were born because I work with a lot of gifted spiritual people that have been like, you know, been seeing spirits since they've been kids or, or to have, being having these psychic abilities, very in tune and, and having things happen. And, um, you know, they feel like the black sheep, but they feel crazy because a lot of times when we start talking about our sensitivities, they get gaslit or they get, the, right. you know. That, well, that, you, you, you have this inner knowing that you, you yeah. grow up with. Yes. And you sense these things at yeah. a very young age. You can you know what people are kind of what they're thinking, what they're feeling. There, there's certainly yeah. an energy that you're able to tap into yes. from from the room that you're in, the experiences yeah. that you're having. But you learn not to trust those feelings because your reality gets denied so many times. And then you be you get conditioned to this other reality. Yes. And then you don't learn to trust yourself until you end up having a spiritual awakening when you're yeah. 20, 20, 30, 40 years old, 60 years old, whenever it happens for you. Sure. And you get driven down into that path. And then it's like your whole world opens up. You get a whole second chance at life because of it. Well, I just made a video the other day. And one of the biggest signs you might be going through it is you start to have those really vivid memories start to come up that don't even make sense. Like memories that don't even, they might not even have any substance, but you start to see the, the, the door handles of your old home, the paint on the walls, the, the, the carpet, the texture of the carpet. Like you start to go into your childhood again. You start to see memories. Like that's one of the things that I see consistent with people going through this, this work and this awakening is like, I'm starting to see memories of my childhood and when I was more tapped in or when I started, you know, stop when I, when I, when I would stop um, allowing my intuition to, you know, to lead me, you know, I was always told this or that. So the, a lot of times that's another thing is you start to have these really wild memories of your childhood starting to surface. So that might be a good, good way too to know that you're going through it. Yeah. It almost pops, to. it almost pops into your head. Like, you know, those old flip books with the pictures yep. down at the corner and you're just like, yep. that's kind yep. of how it pops into your head. These yep. single images that are just, yes. you know, exactly. all these different experiences, you know, it's, it's a single image, but there's an experience attached to it. And it's a brief emotion and you don't know quite what to do with it. You just know you experienced it or mm -hmm. from whatever age level that you're having this memory from. Right. And, right. you know, those are things that ultimately, right, through doing the work that you end up working through and, and dealing with and journaling on and, and working your way through. So, yeah, the black sheep part, I think it's just I always feel like they're the ones it, like it was, it was that always going to be you kind of energy like, oh. I'm going to go through the most here, but I'm going to clear the most here. I'm going to do a lot of work and not just for me, the ones before me, my dad, my mom, and the ones after me, my kids. Like that's, that's something we don't realize. Like when we break chains, when we break patterns. We don't just break them for ourselves. Yeah. It's a gift that you give to not only yourself, but to your family mm -hmm. and future generations. Exactly. That's huge. It's huge. So if someone wanted to start doing shadow work, yep. what does that look like? man those shadow pieces are interesting man you know it's it's something that a lot of us avoid because we always get you know especially when we go through the initial stage of the awakening we always get stuck in this oh the love and light the love and light the love and light it's beautiful it is i get yeah. it especially when you've been in the darkness for so long you start to see some light and you it, it almost becomes a drug and you have to be aware like you can get, you know, the swing of the pendulum, right? You, you've been in the darkness for a decade, maybe depressed and anxious and not knowing who you are. And all of a sudden this awakening happens. And you start to see things. You start to meditate. You start to read the books. And you're like, well, I'm just going to stick over here with all this beauty and light. Well, it always has to come. Everything comes to balance. And you have to realize like you are dark and you are light. And there's those parts of you that you fully haven't allowed yourself to express, to be seen. Those parts of you that you still feel are wrapped in shame. Those parts of you that someone told you that you're not, you shouldn't have that desire or feeling. You know, it's those parts. And those parts, when they're not expressed, when they're not held, when they're not, it's, I like to call it almost like the, the, you have these 
beautiful kids that you love so much. You got three, a boy, a girl, another boy, and, they, and, they, and you love them so much and you hold them up here. And those are represented by like, that's, oh, I meditate. I, I do journaling. I, I help people out. I, I'm a healer. I'm all these things. And then there's these other parts and you got this kid that you don't love very much and you leave him in the basement caged up. And you're like, well, you're part of me, but I don't, eh, I don't really want to show you off too much. I don't want to really bring you to the light. I don't want anybody to see you. So we kind of just kind of feed you a little bit and we lead you in the basement. Those are your shadows. Now, those are the pieces of you that you just, for some reason, either someone told you they're not enough, they're not good, they're, they're bad or this, but you don't give them the time of day. You don't allow yourself to express those. And one of the good ways you can see is look at your patterns. Like look at your patterns. Look how your shadow shows up because your shadow can show up in so many different ways, you know? And I think you just got to look at some of your patterns and how some of your feelings, and that could be your inner child. It could be linked to big trauma. Some of your shadows could be big traumas, but sometimes it might not be. It might just be a small, a small trauma. You know, it might be something else, but um, I'm rambling. I don't know if I even explained that properly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did. When we're starting inner child healing work, mm -hmm. what, what does that look like? How do we get started with that? We get a lot of questions regarding that. The inner child work for me has always been through hypnosis because that's how I learned. Okay. And the reason it's such a huge piece to my program when I work one-on-one -on -one is because, you know, often our inability to feel worthy or, or enough is comes from a moment or a trauma or a time in our life. And what's beautiful about when I guide people in hypnosis is because we kind of deactivate the conscious mind. We use these inductions. We use these special techniques to kind of disconnect that and allow us to go to the root cause inner child work is so important because like for me, if you look at some of the abuse I went through, there's a part of your inner child for me that never felt safe being himself because when I was myself, I got punished. When I was myself, I got taken advantage of. And so not, and the, the worst part is, is that not a lot of us know which part where, where it goes, like how far it goes, or even if it's there, we might just think it's a part of us. Like you said earlier, you know, I think you said, Oh, it's just a part of me. It's just who I am. Well, and a lot but, of people don't remember no. those, those pieces of their childhood at all. And so you'll find them say, no, I had a great childhood. Everything was fine, you know, but they can't actively pinpoint, well, what were you doing from ages five to 13? Right there. Yeah. Right I don't there. Know. And, and, and here, here, here's a crazy story. And this is me being super vulnerable. At 30, 36, I started to get flashes. Like you said, the, 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 you know, that the flashes of the memories coming through. And uh, it was around an old school I went through. And I'm 36 years old. And I'm starting to get flashbacks of something happening. And I'm like, no, no, that's, that couldn't happen. I would have known by now. Like, I'm like, no. And another flashback and another flashback. And I'm in Costa Rica at the time. And I'm, I'm meditating on my favorite sound, which is rain on a tin roof. Okay. My Airbnb had this tin roof and the rain is pouring. It's tropical rain season. It's I'm meditating. And all of a sudden these flashes start to come faster and harder, faster and harder and faster and harder. And I'm like, holy shit. I always wondered why I was so good at leading people through sexual abuse in my sessions. And I always never knew why I had a knack for it, like a really good understanding of it and i'm like oh this happened to me this happened to me and i didn't know for 30 years those memories were locked up 30 wow. years not a single sniff or whiff of that happening until i was in meditation one day and it was like i could hear my inner being going you're ready but you need to clear this you need to make peace with this because from that all these other things have been coming into my life the unworthiness being a big one you know, right this this not feeling man enough being a big one when you when you're taken advantage of from a man and that confusion and that and that energy that and and i can only see it now that i look back and i'm like man and i went i did some hypnosis work around it and my my younger self my eight or nine year old self that went through that was in this box and was like this in the corner and didn't want to come out of the box he said, I don't want to fucking leave this box. There was no windows. There was no doors. It was this dark sealed box. And that represented that part of me, my inner child. 
And I always wonder, I'm like, wow, yeah, I don't remember these times of my life, like these, this block of time, because that inner child, that part of me was so scared, did not feel protected, did not feel safe. And throw through the inner work, I was able to go back and say, hey, look at me. We're stronger. I got your back. Now, often it's just bringing the new awareness to the old time. It's bringing this new awareness and love and understanding yeah. to that time. And when you do it in an altered state, when you do it in a deeper state of consciousness, or you go into meditation, you do it in the hypnosis, it, 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 it does something... Uh, very powerful. You get to change the story. You get to show that version of you, which is still alive and well, that, that, Hey, you felt this way for so long. That's okay. Totally fine. But now, but now we take our life back. Now you come home with me. So you're bringing these wounded pieces back home. You're bringing them home with you. And you're like, look, you're not staying here anymore. You're coming home. We're doing life together. I'm going to lead the way. I got your fucking back. We're a team, we're a duo, we're going to fucking kill this. You're not, you are safe. Because once that part of your inner child feels seen, safe, secure, protected. Oh, I got goosebumps, dude. Yeah. That, that, that whole story and all the triggers along with it kind of just goes, dissolves. Because you're showing up for you. No one else can ever do it for you. Nobody. But you get to go back and say, look, and that was a moment like I, that's a big one for me, right? Like that's like the biggest yeah. trauma of my life. And that only came up in the last four years, three years. God. So, and I, and I, but I also want to be sure to say like, I don't want people to be scared because, and, and think like, oh my God, what's hidden in my vault, right? I don't want people to go, oh my God, what am I not remembering? What happened to me? Did, was I molested? Did something happen to me? I don't, want, I don't want people to have that fear. But more of a faith that whatever there is that needs to come up, where it's going to surface at the right time and gonna be, you're going to be able to handle it. I never thought I'd be able to handle that, something like that. And to be honest, 10 years ago or five years ago, if you would have added that piece of it to what I was going through already, I don't know if I could have made it. That's why there's this, I feel the soul is always in control. The soul is always like, I got you. Or your guides are like, okay, he's ready now. You know? And that's when that layer is ready for you. So powerful. So the, when, when, I, when I say inner child work and how important it is, it is absolutely crucial. And maybe it's, you know, it's thrown around a lot now, but I only know yeah. it the way I do it and the way I lead it. And I, I always lead it with a meditation or a hypnosis. I always get people to go below the surface because it's, it's, you know, when you sit on a couch and talk about your inner child, you can get some work done, but I really have seen over the last five years, if you can really quiet the conscious part of your mind and go deeper, you're going to, you discover more expansion. You're going to tap into more power in order to change, you know, those old loops, those old patterns, those old triggers. Yeah. Because consciously you can sit there and continue to block what's coming up and, yeah you run into you're kind of chasing your tail saying, well, I don't know. And it's like, no, right. you, you, yeah. you, you do know, you do know you, you're just not prepared to, exactly. to step into that next level yeah. um, of that healing you, that there's an inner part of you. That's literally stopping you from being able to say it. And so, yes. then, you, so then we get into seven layers deep and we start going, well, why do we feel this way? What are we experiencing? What's going on? And it takes a while to get there. So I can yeah. see this massive benefit to doing the hypnotherapy. Yeah, man. And you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what, when you're ready, you, you got a, you got a session on me. <laughs> I appreciate be my, that. My, my gift for you. So if you ever feel like you want to explore anything that's, that's uh, allow me to. Yeah. I'll definitely yeah, take I'd, you up on that. Yeah. Cause I, I, I can tell you, as you read these books or you listen to the audibles or mm -hmm. you listen to a podcast, there's, there's these things that just naturally pop up. Mm -hmm. because now all of a sudden you have language and they share a story in the book and you read it or you listen to it. However, you're, you're getting the information and then a mo memory pops up or the emotion around that memory pops up. And then you're on search mode, trying to mm -hmm. go through your past and figure out, well, where is this emotion coming from? Right. And you, we end up doing a lot of this stuff on our own and we don't necessarily realize that we're doing it. And then you get activated. The memory finally gets activated and you're like, well, wait, is that real? Did that happen? 
what is it that I'm actually remembering right now? Is this a fabricated memory? Right. Oh, or, yeah. did, or did this actually happen? And, and, and that's really hard to reconcile in, in your mind. Well, and, and what I, what I've noticed with dealing with, I would, I'd say hundreds of people who have, I've worked with that have, you know, experienced major abuse, molestation and, and anything in between. We gaslight ourselves when that stuff starts to come up. The, the first thing a lot of us do is gaslight ourselves saying, Oh no, it couldn't have happened. Oh, it's not this. It's not that because it's a lot. It's a lot to fucking take in, especially if you haven't really had conscious memory of it or if you've just been pushing it away for so long. You know, there's this kind of safety in not knowing it happened, this illusion of safety. Uh, You you search for intention. Right. It's like, well, that's not what was intended. Like, that's right. Right. Yeah. You know, and and there's this denial that just kind of washes over that experience. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. I can't thank you enough for being vulnerable and sharing that with the audience. I I know that's one of those conversations, this part of the podcast that's going to impact so many people's lives. And I hope that they reach out to you. They schedule a session with you and, you know, they go down this path with you when they're ready, when they feel it's appropriate, when they feel safe to do so. Um, my next question is, what does it feel like if nothing ever really changes? We're doing the work, we're putting in the effort, all of these things are going on, um, but we're just not making any forward momentum. And are we are we not making momentum or are we just not able to see it? I, I, yeah, I, I think you nailed it right there. I think a lot of times we just we're just expecting the next thing so much. We're always looking for something to get better or better that takes us out of what is actually going good for us, what actually is changing what has changed so i like to tell people like you know the the old saying is like don't look back you're not going there i agree but sometimes if you just take a peek you'll notice how fucking far you've come in the last six months a year two years a lot of times we lose sight of how much we've grown how much movement we've made how much progression we've had and it might not look any because you're constantly comparing yourself to someone on instagram or someone who looks like they have it all together because we often do that but often it just comes down to Okay, how's your gratitude practice right now? Like, how gra- how grateful are you for where you are and who you are and what you have? Because a lot of times it's just our focus. We're focused. We're in a state of lack. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. I'm not there yet. I'm not. I've not healed enough yet. That's right. how the shadow can come in too. Say, oh, you haven't done enough healing yet. You haven't done enough healing. Keep going deeper. Keep doing more healing. I'm not who I want to be yet, so I right. don't deserve anything that's really right. happening. Right. Eckhart Tolle also, you, you know, you quoted, I think you quoted something from Eckhart the other, a little earlier, but he says, you know, anxiety and this feeling of unworthiness is usually because we're always in the future. And we, yeah. right there, we, we say that the future moment is more important than life itself. The future moment that hasn't even happened, that might not happen, is more important than life itself, right where you are. It's just recognizing that there's, so many different potentials in front of you and that if you can stay in the present moment and see those potential futures, if I make this decision here, this is going to impact this, this is going to be the next evolution of that. This is where I'm going Mm -hmm. next. And we short, we have these little short term goals, right? And we focus in on that instead of allowing things to just kind of happen to us. Yeah. you You take a mental inventory of, well, this is this is the potential that I want to see happen. This is where I yeah. want to go. Yeah. We kind of, we visualize it, we feel it, we acknowledge it, and then we move towards that. And we create momentum towards that. Unfor- yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of us, and this happens to me a lot as well, you're in your default mindset, and yeah. you, you miss out on some things here and there. And it's unfortunate sure. when you do because life is going to yeah. happen anyway. It's always happening. Of course, it's always happening. And and another thing too is when you think you're not ha- like you, nothing's changing or nothing's going on. Give yourself a break and, and allow yourself to go do something you love to do. Like when was the last, like we get caught up in this mindset stuff and this personal growth stuff and healing stuff. And I, I get it. I love it all. But when was the last time you took a day to just go enjoy what you love to do? When was the last time you picked up your guitar or we went and hung out with a friend and had a pint of beer, not beat yourself up or go for wings or go enjoy life as a, a, as a human being. 
you know, we can get caught up in this not enoughness in a different way. Not enough healing, not enough work, not enough discipline, not enough this. That's no different than being not loved enough, not this enough, not that enough. You know, it can show up in different ways. And sometimes it's just like, fuck, go have some fun. Go have some fun. Go to the beach. Go take a go take two days in an Airbnb and leave your phone at home and go enjoy yourself and go in nature. And I think joy is tapping into as much joy while you're doing the work. It's really important. Yeah, for sure. And, and so I go for walks daily. I, I constantly yeah. have on my weighted vest and I'm yeah. out. I do three to nine miles a day. And there's days where I just, I don't want to do it. I don't feel like doing it, but it's yeah. become such a habit at this point yeah. that I've found the joy in doing yeah. the, ta- in doing the task, even though yeah. I don't necessarily want to do it. It's hot it's out, I'm sweating, it's 90 degrees outside, hundred percent humidity, I'm not really feeling it but you go through and you do it anyway. And in that process, it's like, man, I'm so thankful that I get to go for this walk today, that I get to sweat, that I get to do something hard, that I'm doing something challenging, that I'm looking at nature and I'm out in nature currently. And I'm, it's like you said before, where you had that awakening, where you're seeing things more vividly when you can find the joy in that experience, you see everything around you much more vividly. You see the leaves, you see the veining in the leaves. It changes everything. If you can just allow yourself to get there. And, and that is right there. You, you chose, but you chose to find gratitude in the moment. You chose to look for those things because you have to choose. Yeah. You got to train yourself to look for those things because most of us are going to choose. Oh, fuck. Why me? And it's this victim mentality. It's this victim consciousness. It's this lack of consciousness. It's not enough. It's not good. It's not fun. It's this and that. But you, when you gave the switch that in that moment, your whole vibration changes, the whole frequency of your day changes. Yeah, I was listening to Ed Milet the other day and he talks about, you know, how we're so conditioned to our lives and the things that we experience and all the things that are going on around us at any given time that we don't focus in or hone in on the small things. He's like, I I didn't really know what the back of my hand looked like. He's like, and I found myself looking at the back of my hand and not necessarily recognizing it like. I, I've aged. I've gotten a little bit older. It looks different than than it has in the past. And why didn't I notice this sooner? And right. why, why am I noticing this now? Right. Right. And so we go through life not seeing yeah. things that, that have always been there. Mm-hmm. And it's just mm-hmm. it's so interesting to me if you can just take that moment and pull yourself out of, you know, being so focused on the future and driven towards a particular event or experience. Right. And, and just be for a little bit man, you, you end up finding peace and it might even be what disengages you from your sympathetic nervous system and, and lets you drop into your parasympathetic. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So what are your four pillars of self-worth mastery? So I'm going to jump in because this is the program. I, I just launched the group program that I just launched. It's my latest offer that I'm extremely excited about. It's It basically came about because of the imposter syndrome work I've been working on. And I realized that a, a lot of us are ceiling to receiving or like our, our capacity to receive life abundance, not just financial abundance, but abundance on all scales, on all levels is, has a direct correlation with what we think we're worthy of. Yeah. You know, if, if you don't think you're worthy of the million dollars a year is a very good chance. You're going to push it away and you're going to find a way to go back to what your old default was. If you don't think you're worthy of that love, there's a very good chance you're going to fucking push that love away when it comes into your experience. And you're going to go back to that old pattern, that old person, that old kind of version of love that you thought uh, that you do think you're worthy of. So the four pillars of self-worth mastery, I was like, man, what is my next group going to be? And I'm like, it's all about self-worth. Like if we can truly own our worth and know that we are worthy of abundance, worthy of our dreams, worthy of our desires, because they come from within us. There's nothing that we can't achieve. And as cheesy as that sounds, there's really nothing. But we got to believe we're worthy of it. it, We got to believe that we're worthy of receiving it. So the first week of my group is is all about inner child work. We're doing inner child. We're learning about inner child. We're doing exercises about inner child. We're doing breath work. We're doing somatic work. We're doing some deep releases around the unworthiness of our childhood. Because a lot of that stems from there. Pillar two is... um, Sorry, inner child, it's shadow work. We're dumping into the shadow pieces because those are the pieces we avoid the most, but they're part of us. And when they, when those shadow pieces know that they're being seen and they're being held and there's space for them, 
that's where alchemy happens. You know, that's, that's when alchemy really truly happens. That's when we start to change how we look at these pieces of ours. And we start to love ourselves at a much deeper level, not just the love and light, but the other pieces too, the full unconditional love for ourselves. Week three, we do this, and that's the connection to spirit. That's the connection to our guys, our higher self, or God, or the universe. It's, 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 a, it's welcoming in that, the metaphysical piece and knowing like, hey, I don't have it all figured out. My human brain is not meant to figure everything out. My human brain is meant to be here, conscious. It's the conscious mind. It's supposed to be present. Yes, to be present. That is what the brain is meant to do. And it's meant to adapt and respond to the now. That's how we create. And, and the pieces, the details of, of the manifestations and the creation, I truly believe when we start to surrender that more to the super conscious, the quantum field and trust that, you know, we're going to get the answers as they come. That, that is such a big piece that people are missing. And then week four is, is bringing in, it's that manifestation piece is starting to visualize. It's the Joe Dispenza piece. It's starting to create that future and it's tapping into the heightened emotions of that future. What does it feel like? What does it look like to really be what you want to be and owning that? So bringing all those pieces in that four weeks, the fourth week is just kind of bringing it all together and kind of stepping into that timeline, if you want to call it, or that, that new self, or what I would call the old self, you know, the whole self, just bringing all that um, together. So those are like, those are my four pillars going into uh, yeah, this group in July 19th. That's awesome. I love that. You, you can only receive what you think that you're worth. 100%. 100%. That's, and that, that's so powerful. And so many of us don't even know that we don't think we're worthy. Yeah. Because there are pieces below that often still feel scared being successful, scared being in the limelight, scared being out there, scared being us, because either we've been punished, it could have been by the, by the church, it could have been mom and dad, it could have been, don't do that, shh, don't, you're, gonna, you're making a scene. All these little things that we heard over and over and over again, you know? So my goal in this four weeks is to go, to guide you deeper and to just release the resistance. Like let's, it's not going to be hard. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be expansive, but how do we release the old stories? Once you release the old yeah. stories, you create space, space for all of what that is try naturally trying to come to you anyway. And to stop living a life of smallness and to allow yourself to actually yeah. expand and, and find that excellence that's already yeah. inside of you. It's already, it's already there. there. It, it already exists. There. 100%. You, you just haven't learned to tap into it yet. Yep. Yeah. And each one of you has that. You just don't yep. know that you do hundred percent. And you're going to have a taste of it soon. And, and everyone's going to have these moments, but when you have them grab onto them because they're real, you know, the, the egos and this might want to convince you, like, it's just a glimmer, just a, a moment. No, this is you coming home. That's why you feel so lit up by it. Well, Joey, I can't thank you enough for taking time with us today. For those of thank you, you who haven't signed up for the 21 day self-love challenge, make sure you do that. Joey's going to be a part of that as well. We begin on July 9th. Joey, how can everybody reach out to you, find out more about your courses and uh, don't forget Joey does go live every Sunday. Yeah. Every Sunday on TikTok, I like, I, I guide inner journeys. I used to call them meditations, but they've become more than that. I, I like to call them little mini healing, expansive journeys and of, of clarity. I like to help you tap in with your guides do a little inner child work, a little shadow work. They're 20 minute um, meditations or inner journeys, but uh, they've been a lot of fun. And yeah, we have quite a few um, people join us every Sunday uh, for reaching me. JoeyLabossi.com has all my offers, all kind of what we're going on. Uh, signing up to my email list is obviously uh, probably the best way to get, you know, be the first to know what's kind of going on. Check me out on uh, Instagram, which is at Joey and hopefully you can put in the links here because the people are not going to know how Absolutely. to spell my name. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, same TikTok, Joy Labossi too. And yeah, YouTube, Facebook, kind of all the same thing. But uh, yeah, awesome. all the info is there. Yeah. And when does your self-mastery course begin again? We do the four pillars of self-worth mastery starting July 19th. That'll be every Wednesday for two hours for four weeks. That's awesome what a gift yeah. that is so yeah. huge guys don't miss that make sure you go sign up for it and joey thank you again i'm sure we're going to do many more of these in the future appreciate you brother I had so much fun yeah me too man 